Okay. Well, we started, uh, we're starting quantitative research today. If you remember, if we go back, back, back to class last week, uh, or rather on Monday, we started off with qual qualitative research. And I said, almost any time you want to answer a question, what you want to start with first is sort of the secondary research, stuff that's already been collected. And what we did is we set up our little helicopter journey to down east Maine to try to figure out whether that this business is worth buying or not. And the crazy thing is, within eight hours, we could a answer with sufficient certainty whether this is a business that we wanted to buy or not. Because if you remember, there are about four or five different topics that people totally disagreed on. And if we could have answered those, it caused the people who says, stupid, stupid idea to say, no, you're right, it actually is a good idea. Or it would take people who said, this is a tremendous idea to say, oh, you know, you're right, it's not that good of an idea. If we could clarify those questions. And all those questions could be very easy clarified without going out and doing a survey. Because again, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And every MBA student believes that surveys and focus groups are the answer to everything. And really, in most cases, they are the answer to nothing. Okay, so that's where we left. Um, when you look for secondary data, yeah, company records are great, trade association things are great. There I go again. <laughs> but one of the, I, I used to do something, I used to teach marketing research when I was at, when I was at Wharton, and um, one day, I, I think I did this maybe twice, I thought, well, this is pretty cool, we'll do this library field trip, and this, this guy I knew, I was in a band with him, and he, he was also like a, he worked at the library, and he was a, he's a really, he's kind of a real cool guy, and but he's really funny, so I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, um, a field trip with our marketing research class, and this guy's going to tell us all the cool things that the library has that can prevent you from even having to initially even talk to a person, okay? All the, all the external things. And we, we did this one year, and it's really fun, and, and the students really liked it because the guy is really, he's really, was really a, a fun guy. And, you know, and I thought, okay, great, I'll just take a lot of notes and so that next year I can print out all these notes, give them to people so at least they have a place to start. But the next year, things were like totally different in 12 months because there's so much stuff that comes by in the library. I learned the lesson that probably the best thing that you can do is not to really know what they have at the library, but simply to ask the librarian. So once I realized that, 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 that the solution to knowing the library was just simply to go to the librarian and say, please help me, that I stopped doing the tours. And our band broke up also, and he moved, so, so that's the way that went. Okay, so that's the external sources. But now what we're going to look at is collecting primary data. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start with qualitative data and we're going to begin with some inside sources, and then I'm going to show you how to, the circumstance under which you can use a focus group in a way that will deliver you stuff that's valuable. Okay? Before we, we'll start with the, we'll start with the inside sources, and then we're going to go to the focus group. But for the focus group, I, I need to get four volunteers. And first of all, uh, well, you'll get a chance to think to see whether you want to do this, because what you're going to do is you're going to be a team of moderators that are investigating what a restaurant here in town, an Italian restaurant here in town, what they can do to get people to order more desserts. Okay, The thing about restaurants is that uh, desserts, let's say a, a five dollar dessert might be five bucks. What is the profit margin, not counting labor, what's the profit margin on ingredients for dessert that costs five dollars? <coughs> yeah, you're about right. Exactly right. Yeah, about three seventy-five. So they sell a five-dollar dessert. They make about three seventy-five. So what do they want to do? Sell desserts, not salads. Okay. And so what we're going to look at is what can this restaurant do to encourage more people to buy dessert. So that's going to be your task. And I'm going to need a team of four moderators, okay, to help with that. Now I'll help you a little bit with that. What, one of the things that I would like is I would like um, um, somebody who, and I, you don't have to volunteer, but 
just raise your hand if you really, really just like the idea of running restaurants. And I know some of you put down that you like to own a restaurant or food-related thing. How many people like the idea of that? Okay, great. Okay, now I'll ask one of you guys if you want to volunteer to be in the focus, to be part of the moderation focus group.